Hey everyone, Robert Nixon here. I'm sitting here with Colin Campbell. He's a mortgage specialist specialist in Campbell River. Colin, do you want to introduce yourself quick? Sure. Yeah, uh, my name is Colin. I live locally in Campbell River and I work with a company called Verigo Baragon. So, yeah. So, we did the profile assessment with Colin. Some people don't want to do it. It's funny, I've been learning. I'm like, I'm like, he's an orange. He's an orange. So, we did it quickly with him and he was an orange sky blue ocean, which is interesting. Um, I can tell because he's high energy and stuff and moving a lot, right? So oranges are usually thrill-seeking type, right? <laughs> I'm just twitchy. Oh, it says right here, always moving. What you see, always moving. Enjoy attention, getting activities, dramatic, colorful, casual dress. He's definitely not casual dress. Oh, he's got jeans on. Wearing jeans. Visual it's facial reactions and expressions. He hides them behind the beard. <laughs> Demonstrates confident, awesome points and gestures. Uh, what you hear, prefers fast-paced and brief to the point. So likes to be efficient, I guess. Enjoys enthusiastic expression. Bounces from topic to topic. We're about to find out... Um, May not finish thoughts or sentences, prefers laughter and stories, often promotes ideas, products, and activities. So hopefully he's going to talk about some products in the mortgage industry here. Mm -hmm. um, a blue ocean is more touchy-feely, emotional, uh, makes amazing <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> uh, facial expression indicate warmth and friendliness, prefers soft fabrics to be comfortable, polite, nurturing posture, makes use of touch frequently. Stops work to engage another person, so dog fucker, no. <laughs> well, pretty well. Swearing, sorry. <laughs> That's good. You gotta take breaks and talk once in you a while. Do. That, the little break between projects, right? I was doing a, reading a meditation thing about that earlier today. You never know what you're gonna learn. Uh, yeah, exactly. What you hear speaks with feeling voice, does, use, does not use threatening language and, and avoids conflict, mellow and soothing voice tone, uses frequent I statements, will frequently apologize, maybe give a sentence with I feel. So, feeling, feeling. Thrill seeker and feeling person. So we're going to ask him a few questions here. Uh, I think he's, you've been in the mortgage industry for how long now? I've been dealing with mortgages for, uh, for some time. Um, I was involved, been, been involved in real estate for about 26 oh, years. So yeah, that's, um, that's been a ton of obviously the other side of the whole mortgage thing. Yeah. Um, actually being a mortgage broker, I've been doing it for a little over a year now. Um, I was headhunted. By, uh, right. by a company to come over and start doing it. It was sort of a, a amalgamation of uh, the two industries that I've spent the vast majority of my career in, uh, being real estate and uh, a financial advisor. So, yeah. Real estate sales, right? Real estate sales. So which one do you like better? Or are they both just changed? The change is just needed? You know, it's... Uh, I'm just curious. Yeah, they're, they're both fun industries in yeah. that, you know, being a realtor, you're out, you're active, you're doing <coughs> things with people. But there's a lot of pressure. There's a, a ton of pressure on you guys. Uh, yeah. Because let's face it, it's the biggest purchase that anybody's ever going to make. Yeah. So, and uh, in recent uh, polls that I've actually seen that have been done through uh, third party uh, stuff, they were asking <clears throat> through the real estate transaction, who's the most important people? And you guys were number one, I was number two. Mm -hmm. um, because they yell at you first. Uh, be, that we yell at you exactly, exactly. <laughs> so um, the mortgage professional is more the behind the scenes kind of guy, as the uh, yeah, as opposed to the sure. upfront. Especially in these days, it's becoming uh, more and more that way. Yeah, but also, I mean, you guys probably had to work a little harder with all the changes lately too. We do. There's. I know. I know. I've seen it. Right. But exactly. Classes yeah. and stuff. Yep. There's lots of uh, legislative changes that we've got to keep up on and. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, especially coming up for election time. Everybody's making their promises, and yeah, <laughs> it always affects interest rates or mortgages or how you guys have to in engage with people. Yeah, we went to the debate at the Tidemark last night, and they brought up the stress test a few times. Yes, <laughs> yes, the stress test is everyone's nemesis, and that's why uh, CMHC and the federal government have come up with a new first-time home buyer program because the stress test is killing the first-time home buyers. Yeah, do you want to elaborate on that now since you brought it up? Yeah, I'd be as well to, absolutely. Well. Um, the, uh, the CMHC program, it's, uh, so CMHC is the Canadian Mortgage and Home Corp, uh, and they've tied in with the federal government in doing, it's a new first-time homebuyers uh, grant, uh, where they're actually coming in as a partner with you on the property. So they've been doing this sort of thing in Europe for years. <clears throat> yeah, my nephew uh, uh, owns a place in, uh, in London, England, and the uh, it was actually the, the developer still retains fifty percent ownership over the uh, the place. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in this program, the way that it works is, if you're a first-time home buyer and you qualify through their 
little bit of curriculum that, it, uh, that you've got to get through. Um, they can give you either five thousand dollars on a on the purchase of a five percent, five percent or five thousand, five thousand. Oh, that's five percent. Unfortunately, no. It's oh, only uh, okay. it's only down to to the dollar figure. Oh, okay. uh, as well as uh, if it's a new build, then they'll give you uh, ten grand. Right. They'll go. They'll max you out at ten grand. Um, so, and that's over and above what you want to contribute as the individual per mm -hmm. purchasing the place. So sometimes it gets you over the hump. Um, and can get you out of things like CMHC, like where you've, yeah. you've got to pay uh, uh, this insurance premium on top of your mortgage, uh, and that could be a challenge for some people. <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, that... <laughs> Camera girl's got a question. <laughs> yes, Terry? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so as a mortgage specialist, yes. if you have a first-time home buyer that's coming in for a mortgage, do you recommend putting them on Program. Really? Do you recommend that, or I can absolutely. It really depends on the person's situation. situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, if they are in a really strong financial position, then we don't need to utilize those funds. If, uh, like I say, if you're right on the cusp, sometimes that five or ten grand is enough to bump you up and over the edge and things mm -hmm. like that. So, and yeah. the the con to that would be if you use their money. <laughs> the, yeah, it, if you use their money, uh, it's an interest-free loan for 25 years. Yeah. Um, but what they do is they come in as a shareholder on the property. So you've, you've always got uh, a charge against your title, against the ownership of the mm -hmm. property. Um, so what happens is if you were to sell the home at uh, some point before the 25 years, then if your home has increased in value, <coughs> then so does the repayment. However, if your home has decreased in value, uh, so some places like Vancouver where they're th expecting a bubble to burst. Yeah. Uh, if your price goes down or if your value goes down, well, then yeah, the your payment goes down sure. as well. So they share in the growth as well as they share in the loss, yeah. uh, if need be. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's not a bad program. Yeah, and that's interesting that they get. And something I'd like to point out in real estate that people don't really think about is you, you put your 20% down, the bank lends you the other 80%, but when your equity goes up by 10%, you actually get... 10% equity back from the bank's money, right? That's correct. So that's yep. a huge part of real estate, especially if you're investing in stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're leveraging a lot higher than a stock that's dollar for dollar, right? Yep, absolutely. So that's huge. For, so next question. Um, I think you already sort of answered this. Was that uh, you being headhunted for Campbell River, was that my, what made you become a mortgage specialist or something else? It was, yeah. It was, um, I was in the, the <clears throat> financial sector as a financial consultant. I was working with a company called Raymond James. Oh, yeah. uh, fantastic company. They're uh, the biggest independent um, financial advice company in the country, uh, as well as they're down in the, the U.S. and the whole nine yards. So excellent company. Um, I was enjoying what I was doing, and then I was uh, headhunted by a financial actually by two financial institutions at the same time, and they both wanted me to become their mortgage specialist because I've got, like I said, a very uh, extensive real estate background. Uh, as well as a financial background. So I understand the picture from both sides, yeah, from sure. what the, the client is going through purchasing the home, as well as what the, uh, the lenders are having to deal with on the other side to make that person happy. Um, mm -hmm. So for me to get into the mortgage side of things, it was kind of a no-brainer. It was, uh, like I say, it, was, it got me back into the, the real estate field a bit, yeah. Um, and that I get to engage with people that are like yourselves that are going out there and chasing business. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas the, the financial mm -hmm. advice sort of thing, it was, uh, especially with current market conditions and all of the rest, you're either uh, holding people's hands to make them feel comfortable in what it is that they're, they're doing. Just like you have to do with, uh, right, with your clients, right? With like investments and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Or if the the market <clears throat> takes a tumble, then you're holding hands with that client again, just saying, just hold on, take a breath, let's uh, let's take a step back and mm. watch. So there's a lot of management in that. There's an awful yeah. lot of uh, client management. Yeah. Uh, whereas this is there's a little bit less, although I do try and stay as engaged as I possibly can throughout the process with yeah. both the realtor uh, and the lender, like the actual underwriters and the whole nine yards. So yeah. Which is important for sure. It Communic is. Communication is key. Why are you passionate about being a mortgage specialist? 
You know what? I uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to. <clears throat> my my whole thing was to, to become an architect. Um, oh, yeah. So I've always been interested in housing. Oh, yeah. um, but I sucked at physics. I was horrible <laughs> at physics in high school, uh, and I realized very quickly thereafter uh, when I was at UBC, uh, at university, I wasn't going to improve in physics. <laughs> so, as well as I didn't, I didn't know how I felt about uh, spending seven years in university before I could get yeah, out there and start anything, earning. For sure. So I jumped ship from uh, doing the architecture side of things to the urban land and economics program uh, at UBC. So I figured if I, if I couldn't design and build, well then maybe I could design the, uh, uh, the developments and things like that, you know, so I'd still have a finger in it. And with that I thought, you know what, enough is enough, let's just get out there and get, get involved in the industry. And that's when I actually started in real estate. So you did the one-week course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Year, or year, year max, I guess. It is. Well, actually, it was part of the uh, the Urban Land and Economics program oh, at the it? time. So I think Steve did that course. Yeah. So, well, yeah, because you can actually get a degree in it, right? Yeah, right. Technically. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a good introduction. And like I said, I just uh, decided to jump ship and just get get into it. And just sell real estate. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I think you already sort of answered this, but what did you do before becoming a mortgage specialist? Yeah, like I said, investment advisor. Yep, exactly, a financial uh, consultant and, uh, and a realtor. Yeah. Uh, I've also owned uh, a number of businesses, from oh god, graphic design to textiles companies. I owned uh, Western Canada's largest uh, textile company up until 2010, and I sold it all. Got rid of it all. Yeah, I moved on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was I, after real estate. Uh, that was or that was during real yeah. estate. Yeah. It was. Um, we came they off. Say give a, what is that saying? Uh, give a busy man a job you want to get done or something, right? <laughs> well, that, that's that's about the sum total of it. You know, it was it was one of those deals where um, if you, I would, if I needed something done, I would just as opposed to going out and sourcing somebody, I would just start a business and then just do it that way. So it, uh, in my twenties and early thirties, it was uh, it was a busy time for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, does she have that question in here? Because it's sort of tied into that. Um, I don't know if she has it in there or not. I'll I'll get to it. I'll go. Yeah, but um, talking about your other business and stuff, you've obviously owned a couple other businesses. Yes. Do you own any other businesses now still? Uh, I, uh, including any investments as well? Like yeah, real the, estate investments or anything? You know what, The uh, my biggest uh, sort of the side project these days is I'm a published author on uh, financial literacy. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I wrote a book called uh, The Missing Money Manual, mm -hmm. as well as I wrote a course guide to go along with it. So it's actually a full uh, educational program. Nice. But it takes people right from whether or not you should have a check in your savings account, all the way through to I need that. getting a mortgage and all the rest. You know what? Oh, it's, it's surprising, and and even in writing the book, it was uh, it was amazing how much I I personally learned. But yeah. it was yeah, just putting it on paper. Exactly. Well, I mean, the fact is, is that it's no no longer taught in school anymore. Right? I mean, when no, you was, and it, I, was it ever? Well, it was for me. Maybe I'm showing Did my they age for us? now. Did they for us? No, I don't okay. think so. I'm like, I mean, I'll remember. Oh, I, uh, okay, now I'm showing know, my age. School. Good. Okay, so thirty seven. He's thirty eight. I'm thirty six. He's thirty eight. Exactly. Uh, it's um, so yeah. I was having clients come in when I was a financial consultant, yeah. and they didn't even know what a void check was. And right. these were people in their you know late twenties, early thirties, and or if I said please go and get a, a, a you know a transfer statement or something like that from their from their financial institution, yeah, they would look at you like a deer caught in headlights. So I thought, oh, geez, there's really a need for this. So primarily, it was. It was done as a glorified business card. So if I came across a client that was needing a little bit more training, and I tried to make the book as in layman's terms as I possibly could. Yeah, uh, where can we find that book? Amazon uh, it's on Amazon, yeah. And uh, yeah, you betcha. And we're actually just about to release a, um, a second version of it. Nice. So an updated version. Right, which is quite common with a lot of books. Yeah. Exactly, well I mean. Is it on Audible? Uh, you know what? That's where I, I get most of my books. <laughs> not <laughs> yet. Not nope. yet. Not nope. yet. Cool. No. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually, yes. Yeah, you betcha. But you can get like the EPUB and all that sort of stuff, like the electronic version of it. Yeah, yeah, right. So, Kindle or whatever, yeah. Yeah, you can get that. Yeah. 
You bet. Cool. Anything else? Nobody needs to hear this voice. Uh, no, you, we won't th- have th- you do it. This would just put people. I wouldn't do it either. Exactly. And I haven't been able to get Sean Connery to uh, to answer any emails yet. So no, no. I don't know so. who the audible guy always seems to be. The same sort of tone of voice, like. I feel like there's one guy that must do a lot of them. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, cool. What about real estate? You if know, you want to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, That's I, what I'm curious about. I would love to get more property. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a great thing for uh, diversifying your portfolio, especially Probably. locally, uh, because we're still behind the eight ball in our price. Everything in Campbell River is still on sale. It's still cheap, yeah, even though prices is, have doubled yeah. over the last 24 months, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we've, we've really jumped, but I think people have just kind of realized, finally, Courtney is not the top of Vancouver Island. Yeah. You know, there's, uh, there are other communities. Um, I know, because I'm the prime example of that. My wife and I moved from North Vancouver to here. Um, my you, did you not know? Like you had never been here before? I my Mid- mother-in-law uh, moved moved here first. She was the one that started the migration over, yeah. uh, and she came from Palra, from, uh, from the Sunshine Coast. Mm-hmm. So it was a good transition for her. Um, and then my folks were living in White Rock. I retired them, sold their home in White Rock, and when we came over here to look for property, they originally were looking at Courtney and Comox and Cumberland in that area. Um, and they uh, they very quickly realized that there's no waterfront in Courtney Comox. Right. No, it's yeah, it's, it's all privately owned. Yeah. Whereas uh, Campbell River has the beautiful boardwalk going along the front, yeah. just like uh, White Rock does yeah. over on the mainland. So it was it was a, a really good transition for them, and then that kind of put the writing on the wall for my wife and my children and I to uh, come here as well. Hmm. Yeah, it's nice here. It is. Well, and we I mean, didn't want to raise our children in the city. Uh, we right. wanted all to... All kids? I've got an eight and a ten-year-old. Nice. That's all of my gray hair. <laughs> so, yeah, they... Um, now, they're, they're good kids, but we didn't want to, to raise them in the city, so we got them over here before they, uh, they were going into school. Yeah. We wanted to give them the same sort of experience that my wife and I had, a small community where you could play street hockey in the street or ride your bike to school and not be super stressed about it yeah for sure i grew up on a horn but i don't know if i'd want to put my kids through that yes <laughs> <laughs> riding the, the first ferry to school every day and uh, i don't know it's i think you're i think you get raised differently over the different mindset and stuff it's good, good for you in some ways but there's a lot of restrictions right yep for sure girlfriend sports i one of party in exactly well one of my good friends he was not uh, those things. he's a, a quadra guy uh, so mm-hmm. his stories of the boat going back and forth are uh, they're pretty entertaining. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Good sunrises. Yes. Hoping like hell he was going to make the good last wedgies board if you can things. fight back, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when you're young. Exactly. Did I ask that one? Is there anything you should know before starting out as a mortgage specialist? Oh, uh, before being... Sounds like you knew quite a bit before anyway. I did. Right? I, was, uh, I was fairly knowledgeable about uh, before I got into it. Uh, so I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. I yeah. think somebody who is, if you're just kind of flipping a coin and saying this could be a, a good uh, a good industry for me, things that you would want to uh, to know, you have to have a good network um, of, mm-hmm. of individuals, or at least not be scared of trying to develop that network. If you're going yeah, to I sit- didn't have anything when I got into state. Really. Exactly, but you've done very, but you, very well. But you have to develop it. Yeah, I mean, you, you've done very, very well in your advertising campaigns, you know. Yeah. Um, lots of people have, have gotten engaged with you through those things. Yeah, so you've sure. got to be able to get out there, put yourself out there. Um, Become extroverted if you're not, right? That's what, I, that's what I say. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're not going to sit in a bank and have deals falling on your, your desk that uh, yeah. that you're going to want to chew through. Yeah. Let's put it that way. You're self-employed pretty much, right? You are. Yep. If you're working directly for, a, well, I think it's still the same, right? You're for a bank, but it, yeah. Even if you were, because I was a manager uh, with TD yeah. uh, before I uh, moved to Verico, and there is, um, there's a lot more restriction uh, with the bank and versus being an independent broker. Um, sure. Yeah, so just more legislation that you've got to jump through because it is a financial institution that you're, uh, that you're, mm-hmm, working, that you're sure. representing, that you're working for. Yeah, less options. Mm-hmm. What can someone expect when applying for mortgage? Um, and what sort of things would someone should someone have in place before applying for a mortgage? Absolutely. Um, I would say your mortgage stuff 
is the first thing that you should do, honestly, yeah, before you sure. get out, and that way you're not wasting Rob's time. Uh, if you go out and you or have meet been, me in the office first, I'll give you my recommendations. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But you know, if you if you don't know that what kind of money you can get uh, yeah, and all the rest, you're kind of going out and throwing the dice. Um, secondly, I just I mean I've just had this sort of an incident. It was uh, a, a couple that were very very well established. Um, <clears throat> Thought they had all their ducks in a row, had all their financial documents. The guy came in, super yeah. organized, but he had never checked his Equifax. Mm, Anyways, never, yeah. And well, he, you know, he had done stuff uh, about say, let's say, eighteen months ago, right. for uh, for example, and everything was fine. When he came in to do it this time, there was an issue with his Equifax. Uh, mm. He was a <clears throat> fellow that went by two names. He went by either his given name or his middle name. And so he ended up having two Equifax reports as a result. So his beacon score was incorrect. Your beacon uh, score is the number that, in case you don't know, is the number that uh, any financial institution or any creditor looks at uh, in order to lend to you. It's certainly uh, sort of the broad strokes of the uh, the process. Your credit, your credit, your yeah, financial. Exactly. Exactly. Snapshot, sort of, really, right? Exactly. So have the, had this guy been going to look at his credit score or had one of those apps uh, like yeah, Milo yeah. or one of those that, that uh, is constantly watching your credit score for you and gives you updates and reports and things like that, mm -hmm. um, it could have been avoided. Um, and as a result, they ended up losing the home. Because uh, so they had an offer. They had an offer already on the property. We unfortunately just couldn't get the remedy done in time yeah. through Equifax and have enough time to do the uh, the lending as well. Because you can't dispute. Well, that was different. But if you have something wrong in your file, you can dispute it, right? Absolutely. Yes. Don, Don Campbell. He's a real estate investor, and he always tells the story. You should always check your credit because Don Campbell is a common name, and he says. I think it's been more than once that he said someone else's stuff report onto his credit. Oh, yeah. And he's had to go get it reversed, right? Well, my father and I were the prime mm -hmm. example. We were named exactly the same. Right. So you screwed his oh. upper. <laughs> I totally did. Yes. Yes. And through my, uh, through my younger years, I was, I was a typical 20-year-old. Yes. <laughs> uh, a new truck and a, and a new ATV. You know, you gotta, you got to have toys, right? Yeah. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, I don't know if you agree, but I always tell people, they're like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm saving or I'm doing this. And I would say you should talk to your broker, get them to pull your credit or pull it yourself so at least they can see where you're at and tell if you need to work on anything. Because if, if you have 20 grand, save it up and you need 30 and it's going to take you 10 months, but your credit's here and you don't know that or you need to fix something and you have that time to do it still while you're saving. Absolutely. So that, that makes sense, right? Absolutely. Well, and a lot and of people, people are always worried about your credit being pulled, right? Which yeah, because in a way you have to, but not. It, Well, yes and no. Um, if it's, there's two ways of drawing someone's credit. You can either have a hard impact on your credit, which is when we do actual lending, uh, or there's a soft impact on your credit, and it doesn't doesn't really affect your credit score at all. Right. Well, you um, can't do a soft poll, can you? Yes. Yep. yep. Can you? Oh, okay. Yep. Financial institutions do it all the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You betcha. So we can uh, we can check before we actually do anything uh, yeah. big for you. Yeah. You know, uh, and saying we'll work with somebody if if somebody is in that situation where they they're close but they're not quite there <clears throat> or they need to build credit if they have none or something yeah, right exactly. tell them what to do and how much to spend on their credit cards and exactly like and that's where being a, a, a financial advisor definitely comes in. yeah i can sure. tell you the the shortcuts to mm -hmm. develop your credit very very quickly um the other biggest thing that i think i've run into in terms of personal lending especially if it's for a younger person, don't go and get a vehicle say, two <laughs> minutes before you come and see me, because that is a surefire way to shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. You know? I mean, because vehicles are so, so expensive these days. What if they don't know? What if they already have a new vehicle and then they want a house and, and that's what's screwing them up? Oh, you know, I, I did have this conversation with a young fellow not terribly long ago, and I said, well, how much do you love your car, and how much do you want your house? Yeah. Um, if it's a lease, return it. Just yeah, get it yeah. gone, and then let us do our jobs. And then go get something And else. then go get go get a car. Or buy a used one. Exactly. I always say my dumbest, dumbest thing I ever bought was my brand new truck. It was a Absolutely. demo, but my mortgage was 933 My truck payment was 800 Yep. 
It's like, it just didn't make sense. Exactly. And you know it was nice. It's a nice truck, but... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. what did that guy do? Uh, I, he, I don't know what he has done. I haven't, uh, I haven't spoken to him again since. So. Yeah, if you're locked into a loan, it's tough, right? Yeah. So start it, paying it off. And, exactly, yeah, yeah, just keep your head down, your backside up, and keep working, right? Uh, tell me about your first time helping someone with their mortgage application. Oh, God. Uh, the first mortgage app I ever did, uh, I was very much so dropped in the deep end. These, uh, the first deal I ever did, it was a chain. So uh, it, what a chain is, is oh, when yeah. one person is selling a home to buy this guy's house, and then this guy is selling their house to him to buy this house. So we had all of these houses that we're trying to do this, this deal for, and we were doing all of the, uh, the finance for all of it and mm-hmm. it was a disaster it was an absolute train wreck one one family uh the mom and dad had very poor credit so they were bringing their children in to uh, to assist which was that was okay that was fine um but the it ended up that the very very first guy in the chain that set the whole thing uh thing through he ended up that uh deciding to leave his job while we were doing the lending and went on EI. That was it. Deal done. They were all done. All of them collapsed. But sometimes where you result. hope you have a first time home buyer in there. Oh. Then they don't have something to sell, so it breaks that chain. Exactly. Yeah. There's there's very few deals that are gimmies these days. Yeah. Um, like uh, like we used to have. And it, I mean, it's all how everyone works together too, and personalities and absolutely it is. how well you work with other agent and other client. It's absolutely absolutely it, it can yeah. be difficult for sure. Oh yeah, it wouldn't be the first phone call that I've had to make to uh, to real estate agents clients just saying listen this is no bearing on on these people trying to, to buy this house we're trying to work through a hiccup yeah and for sure. uh yeah so we go, just have, go we easy just have one we work through thank god i don't need to knock wood now because it's already done but <laughs> there you go see there and there, oh yeah we challenge. did too and it was yeah we we're very much so challenging it yeah. sucked to say the least well it all came together so it worked out in the end but that's great and it was my client was really good on my end so that was good it was yeah, the other end that was being difficult. Um, what's the most challenging aspect? Um, I would say the most challenging aspect is keeping people um, or giving people a realistic expectation of mm. what this process Especially is. Especially in this to be. market, right? Yep. Oh, of the process, sorry. Yep, exactly. Well, and, the, and market conditions. You know, yeah. I mean, market conditions, if they're fast, well, geez, we've got to hustle, you know? So you've got to mm-hmm. make sure you've got your ducks in a row before you go shopping. Um, so you can go in subject free and things like that. Or depending on, on what the situation is, you know, we, we can give advice as to, okay, this is, a, this is going to be a rental property, so this is what you're going to anticipate going right. down the pipe, you know? So yeah, there's definitely a lot going goes into it. Uh, the biggest thing is have that conversation first before you get yourself into a situation where it becomes urgent with the broker I yeah, mean, yeah yeah exactly know where you're at yeah. i know and it's, it's hard because sometimes like i've had people sitting in this office and it's like, like he's like oh yeah i make really good money and he spits out a number and i'm like you know that may be great money to you but let's get you into a banker and you know sure enough they can't get a mortgage right yeah. so absolutely you know 10 grand is a lot of money but a hundred's more and it's all relevant to what the, the government and everything is implementing and the stress test and absolutely qualification and yeah. all that stuff. Fingers so. crossed the uh, the stress test does get rolled back. It's one of the things that doesn't uh, or does it does yeah yeah it's uh, it's one bit. of the things that's been on the the campaign trail. Like they're saying who was it? Uh, I was reading this morning. The conservatives are saying we're uh, we're talking about it and that they were either going to roll it back or get rid of it. I would have to, to read the article. Again. Well, and it, they were talking about it last night. And I said to Tanya, but my hugest problem with it is your so your house is up to four hundred grand. We're still seeing multiple offers here, even though the market slowed down a little bit. Yes. So everything under four hundred grand is getting inflated, and in, let's say under five hundred grand, mm-hmm. stuff over five hundred grand is slower to move. Mm-hmm. So their prices are coming down a little bit. Unfortunately, the lower end homes are getting pushed up. You're right. So your average price is going up, but it's I don't feel like it really is helping. If those people could afford that, there wouldn't be so much pressure on these, and more people could get into them. And I agree. I don't know. It's just, it's just weird because then people have to buy worse houses for, I don't know. 
Well, yeah, instead of a, instead of a house that's hundred grand more, but has a suite so they can rent it out or something, right? Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. It's, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. What is your greatest accomplishment in your career, or have you reached it yet? Is it a textile company? <laughs> oh, well, that was a good one. Yeah, I mean, we had like one of our clients was Gene Simmons, so we were doing okay oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we did uh, two Olympic contracts and all that. Uh, I think in my career, I don't know. Um, I've had some some pretty darn good highs with uh, with my career for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think there's there's always another attainable goal though. You know, there's there's always more that you well, can Well, why would you keep going you if there's not? Exactly. I mean, I've already uh sued or retired once. So, I Did you? I did. Yeah. When we we first moved here, uh I thought okay, I'll slow down and uh, I didn't slow down. Yeah. I, I went right back. Some people just don't have it, right? Yeah. I can only play so much golf, you know. It gets <laughs> I get twitchy, especially having young kids, you know. It would be different if the kids were grown. Um, right. Yeah, exactly. But. You've got to stay at home and deal with them if you're retired. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God they're both in school. Yeah. So this one we talked about a bit earlier. I don't know if you can answer it. Um, well, what do you do to market yourself? Do you use Facebook, Instagram? Absolutely. Newspaper we talked about? Do yeah. You? I mean, we've... Uh, I've certainly, I've got a, a big campaign that we're just about to push through with uh, with Black Press, and there's uh, there's going to be all sorts of good stuff coming there. So you're going to see my uh, rather furry face, hopefully uh, around quite a bit uh, through through some different advertising and social media and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Absolutely, social media is a is a big part of how it is how sure. we work these days because it's uh, with the demographics that we're trying to hit. It it works locally. The newspaper is still it's still a, a good. Uh, a good promotional piece because people actually still read it. Yeah, um, so I'm told. Yeah, <laughs> just not me. I put no newspaper come to my door. Right. Well, you know what? It's, uh, it's well, people do. It's the true. funny thing is, is if you have conversation with people about reading the the local newspapers. Yeah. Uh, and I've even had this conversation with the uh, the salespeople for the, the the newspaper. Yeah. And the conversation was people flick through it before they put it in the wood stove. <laughs> but the parts there's they, always something they're catching they always flick through the middle part I'm like part. Canadian tire flyer I'll look at yeah exactly right? but they always flick through the middle part which is real estate so you're, we're always getting the the uh, middle the part just happens to be where they it is it is it, usually where uh, they chuck the flyers is almost always where the realtors are yeah, yeah and I, so. I don't do a lot of newspaper advertising. I have my little bit in the back page but yep um, yeah interesting yeah the newspaper who was it we were talking to Hannah and yeah she said um, what did she say? How many people did she do? You remember? Oh, the percentage. Yeah, it was high. It was high. But something I think people don't realize, which she sort of brought to my attention, and I mean I knew it, but the black press and uh, what's the frick's our paper called? Campbell, Campbell Ramirez, Ramirez, right? Yes. It's not just a paper; it is online. Like I, I look at your mirror articles. I've read them on Facebook. Absolutely. So they do it. All it does go that 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 place and get a lot of other audience. And that is generally it's actually not where other I, than print, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's usually where I, I'll read the uh, the sort of main articles. Yeah. For uh, for the newspapers, through social media. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. so convenient. Mm-hmm. The distractions. Yes. What are your long-term goals? Uh, my long-term goal is to own this market, quite honestly. Uh, <laughs> but You know, there's... Yeah, go ahead, it, sorry. No, it's okay. I, th- I think, uh, and I think it's... I think it's attainable, to be honest. I think so, too. You know, if uh, if you're... Uh, a young gish. Set the bar high. Yeah, well, if you're a young gish person um, that still has <laughs> 38. Yeah, yeah exactly, 38. Yeah, it, that still has the drive to go out and chase and look for the business. I think you can you can be very successful. Yeah. If you're out there and you want to help people, uh, you can be successful. If you're sitting back on your laurels and expecting the business to land on your desk, yeah, you're you're not gonna. You're not going to be as effective as you should be. Yeah, and you, uh, you obviously know how that works a bit because you were in real estate for some time, so you probably had to do that. And then, after four or five years, you started to get more repeat referral, probably right, where you didn't have to do that's that as right. much. So that's right. Um, Similar, but being in the in the city, um, you were still chasing. You were still going out and more trying competition. To, well, absolutely. Yeah, you were utilizing the contacts that you had. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? for sure. Do you have any tips for someone who is interested in becoming a mortgage specialist? Do your homework, for sure. Um, <clears throat> they're financial institutions, like sort of the big five, like TD and, and RBC, things like that, they're always looking for people. 
they re really they they are. Uh, it's it's a an easier way to I would say get into the industry just to get some experience, like get a few wet. Yeah, exactly. However, it is incredibly restrictive. Uh, so when you're dealing with the big sort of the big five, um, they're the big five for a reason, and you've got to ha be in an immaculate condition, in my opinion, uh, to get your deals done quickly there. If you've got the least little bit of complication, um, if you're young, if you've got other properties that you need to bring in, I strongly suggest that you talk to someone like myself yeah. uh, that has the experience to, to look at the whole picture, not just a very small piece of it. Um, because you've got to have somebody that understands your taxes that understands your financial picture, that understands the house that you're going after and what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so there's there's definitely a lot of things that do get involved uh, in the purchase of a home. And you need to kind of have those things in the back of your head before you get into the industry, <coughs> I would say. Yeah, for sure. It sure is. Just to help. clarify though, as a broker, you do, still, you do still deal with the big five. I do. You just negotiate on a different level and you get broker rates, right? Which That's right. Which could possibly be better, right? And Most actually, time. I mean, with some of the institutions, we've actually got a completely different avenue that we, we can circumvent an awful lot of the actual bank's process. Mm. So sometimes going into the bank is a slower process than dealing with us. We can get it done yeah. more quickly than the actual guys in the bank. Well, and unfortunately, someone that's self-employed, like a broker, and someone that's an employee, sometimes the urgency is there a little more to do the deal for the client, and it, it is a huge help for us because absolutely, if we have to next ask for an extension on day 13 and there's another offer on the table, then they lose the house, right, if you can't get an extension. Well, that's it. Anytime you ask for an extension, you're opening the contract, and yeah, you're giving exactly. the sellers an opportunity to say, yeah. no, I'm done. And that's a, that is a challenge because it happens. So what about, uh, as far as like an investment standpoint, if I want to buy 100 investment properties, would you suggest starting at the big five banks? Is there Because there's some rules around that where you can tap out, right, and then you can start going to the other lenders. Uh, there is, yeah, uh, depending on what the situation is, right? I mean, right. you're like one bank will generally carry about five or six mortgages for you at mm -hmm. any given time, and then you've got to... The normal sort else. of... Exactly. Thing. So, yeah, exactly. Um, if you were looking at things like commercial properties, you're no longer dealing with the mortgage specialist at the banks. You're dealing with uh, the commercial lending guys. <coughs> so, and they will only... They, again, they've got some, some fairly strict regulation that they've got to play with. Um, right. And brokers do commercial? You do commercial? We can do commercial, yep. Uh, now, we've got to play by some of the same rules, but we do get to work outside of the box as well, where... Uh, we can bring in private lenders. Now they might be right. a little bit more money, um, but they there's what if there? it's a tighter deal. Exactly. Yeah. Well, somewhere like Port Hardy, where away. it's a little further north. Is that yeah, harder? It, yes. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You know. We'll talk about that more. Absolutely. <clears throat> oh, where are we? I'm getting lost again. Um, if you had to be. Uh, that's, no, that's it for. Uh, well, I got some more personal questions here. Is there anything yeah. else you want to talk about on the broker part of it? You know, any I, of the rules or changes or anything? Or? Yeah, I mean, I would say there's there's a couple new or other things that uh, that we could definitely address. Yeah. Uh, Campbell River, we've got a lot of um, new immigration coming in, mm. uh, and the policy has changed around uh, new first time home buyers from out from out of country, and oh. uh, that we've got to be able to source their their money, even from their home countries now, uh, because is that a FinTrack thing? Uh, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, so it's a security thing to make sure that because there is so much money coming in from overseas and being washed through places like Toronto and Vancouver, uh, that it was we there had to be something put in place, and this is one of the things, as well as um, one of the other policy changes that kind of ties in with this, but it's it's become a blanket policy change, is that we used to need money in your account for 30 days. And right, it's right. no longer 30 days, it's now 90 days. We need to be able to trace back that uh, those assets. So, Or a gift letter or something if it came from family. Exactly, exactly. So make sure, again, if you're, if you're a first time home buyer, if you're somebody that's looking to get in and you're borrowing money or something of that nature, make sure that you've got that money set aside for at least 90 days. Again, another reason to talk to them ahead of time, right? Absolutely. Um, and back to the FinTrack, watching the 
We need that now, right? Yes. But I was like, what do you need my account number for again? Yeah, the information the government. Is, <laughs> right? That's right, yeah. The information is getting a lot Mandate. more personable. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Exactly. And that's one of the things. I mean, when when you're looking at, at purchasing a home and things like that, uh, I mean, I've said a few times to make sure you get your ducks in a row. It's going to be invasive. It, You know, you can't be embarrassed about talking about your financial situation. Even mm -hmm. if it's a poor For situation, sure. it doesn't matter. You know, it, trust me, I've seen it all. Uh, I've seen horrifically wealthy people and I've seen broke uh, and didn't uh, didn't have the, the bucket to the, go to the washroom and sort of deal, you know? Um, but there's always a way to... Well, that's it. Those people... Right? Ex exactly. Those people, those are the people that we'll work with and over a period of time and we'll get them into a place. We'll get them there. Mm -hmm. You know? For sure. So... Even if it's a long term. Like sometimes, sometimes it takes a year, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Of yep. uh, hand holding or whatever you want to call it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Or even private lending. Um, yeah. It's it's becoming, um, especially with the stress test. It's private. Sorry, go ahead. Absolutely. I was going to say it's becoming more and more common for us to do, say, a private mortgage for somebody to get them into the home. Right. Uh, we'll do that for maybe six months. Mm. So, yes, it's going to be a higher interest rate, but it's an interest only debt. It's an interest only loan. And then once you're in a better financial position, because we worked through a few things, then we can restructure your finance and refinance the whole whole deal again. Yeah, for sure. So private lending. Most of the time requires 20% down, right? Um, in most it, cases? It can. Uh, you know, there are definitely lenders out there that'll go for less. All right. uh, I've seen deals go with even 5%, provided really? that the deal is, the, the property is, is, is valuable enough. Yeah, you know? it's a good enough deal. Do you feel that private lending is getting a little more pressure now with all the stress tests and stuff? It's definitely. I've heard, I've heard that a little it bit. It is. It's getting uh, more and more common. <laughs> Uh, that people are, are having to go that route. So, yeah, it's, it, and it still hasn't been 100% regulated uh, right. either. Right? Well, that's so, what I wonder. Does it report to your credit? It's, no, it, not, if it's an interest only loan. So it won't help then, your credit build. No, but if you're working with, well, I, I shouldn't say that. <coughs> yes, it does, because there's going to be a reporting history that we can play off of. So we, when we go to the the new lender to refinance or restructure your finance, then there is opportunity there for us to say, listen, this guy's been doing it for this long and there hasn't been one late payment, no hiccups. We're doing okay, we just need to restructure. The biggest part of my job is being able to tell your story to the mm -hmm. underwriters uh, and giving reason behind things. So. Like I said before, if you're if you do have a questionable credit history, if you've got those late credit card payments or whatever, yeah. well, it might be for a reason. You know, if you're if you're a parent, it might be your kid's cell phone. If you can explain it, like exactly. to the lender, right? If exactly. It's, it's so, one, your telescope went to your junk email by an accident, right? Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes I can sure. I can explain the issues away, yeah. right? And if anyone ever wants to go pull their credit, they can just go to Equifax or TransUnion. It's like twenty five bucks. Right? That's right. As well pull as your whole credit. Yeah, and there's there's lots of apps now out yeah. there that'll do it as well. Are they accurate enough? Or? Uh, yeah, they are because they okay. actually report. Well, a lot of them will report uh, straight to Equifax or one yeah. of the or Tran, uh, TransUnion. What's the big one they always advertise? I always thought it was out a little bit though. Credit Karma, yeah, isn't it? I was always, always told that it wasn't exact, right? Yeah, well, but I guess at least it's a snapshot. If it's like five hundred, at least you know you're down there. If it's eight hundred, you're. There was just an article written oh, uh, about. A guy that went and pulled his credit bureau from five different uh, bureau when they're industries. All different. Every single number was different. Yeah. The two that we're concerned with are Equifax and TransUnion. They're the two right. big ones. And if you have an RBC account, I think it's TransUnion, you can pull it for free. You can actually change it with debt loads and stuff. It's kind of cool. Yeah, there's there's uh, a few of the, like the companies are doing it. that now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say something else about credit. Some lighter stuff about there you. you okay. Um, right. If you're shipwrecked on a desert island, <laughs> but all your human needs, such as food and water, were taken care of, okay. What two items would you want to have with you? Okay. Well, if, I, if I've got food and water, obviously yeah, like there's the other side of that coin. So you know, <laughs> gotta have some some cushy uh, bum paper. You got that stuff. All the stuff to live. Oh, that that's that's, 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 that's taken care of. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. say because that, that would yeah, be every, all your human needs. So everything you Ooh. need to live. I mean. Human needs are broad, but your toothbrush, your, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Fair <laughs> news. I would say, um, 
I wouldn't want my cell phone. You can keep that. Quite honestly, <laughs> <laughs> maybe because then you can get off when you want to get off, though. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. If it was uh, if it was a nice spot, yeah, I could probably hang out there for a while. Uh, I. I would say, well, my, my wife and my kids. I would yeah. want them them floating around, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, exactly. I figured I felt the wife smacking me behind the head there for that one. Um, as well as... Uh, uh, I'm honestly not 100% sure. Sunscreen, Sunscreen. for me, I'm Scottish. Yeah, you can burn. I would definitely need that. I just kind of spontaneously combust. It's got sunscreen, wife and kids. Yeah, there you go. No cell phone. Exactly. Oh, what did you? Oh, you already told us. I think. What did you want to be when you grew up? I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. Figure that out. Didn't you say something though earlier? Well, the, the well originally it was, it was the whole architect yeah. thing, but yeah, that's long gone now. I'm afraid. Um, no, I uh, I'm very happy doing what I what I do now. I uh, I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That's good. I do. Nothing's easy in the grass. So I always tell people like when they're. You know, I, I mean, I've learned from experience, right? Definitely, like, going from being a mechanic. You know, now I miss parts of being a mechanic, right? You're yeah. always going to have something that the grass is greener on the other side, and it's none of it's easy. Exactly. Especially if it's hard. It's not, like it's, or if it's, if it gets you somewhere and reward is rewarding, it's never easy, right? Yeah, absolutely. If you could only choose one song to play every time you walked into a room for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm horrible with song names. Happy birthday. No. Yeah, exactly. Uh... Ooh. <laughs> None, because of giving. I honestly don't know. What do you What do you go with for something like that? I mean, to walk in a room like Hallelujah or something, I don't like, know, or something easy, because you got to hear it over and over, exactly. like classical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what superpower would you most like to have? Oh, if you could read somebody's mind, it would uh, sure save a lot of time. That would, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be here, no. Especially with my wife. <laughs> save yeah, save did, tons of time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna oh, get I, hit for that later. Yeah, and we already asked you if there's anything I should ask you, but didn't. Um, do you have any anyone else that you'd recommend I interview? Ooh. Uh, okay, so for financial services, I would say there's uh, there's certainly a couple of guys that I would suggest. Um, there is a fella that I used to work very closely with uh, in Victoria named uh, Harp Sandu. And he was, uh, he is an incredibly good financial consultant and he's licensed in both Canada and the U.S. So for those of you guys that are um, living part-time down south or something like that, great guy to chat with because he can uh, mitigate both sides of the border. Yeah, that's uh, important. Yeah, I would say sure. he would be an excellent person um, in terms of... <clears throat> the actual industry obviously you know rob is uh, is your key realtor guy that you're going to want to chat with we and she interviewed me before fantastic might have to do it again there you go exactly um i would say there's there are definitely a couple of great home inspectors locally uh yeah. you know uh any that you like there's i always used to I did use Ol uh, I did olaf i did olaf okay yeah. good guy i always used to use gary dry uh, gary's good too gary's actually a, i did ask gary if you do one we just haven't followed up he's an excellent guy to yeah, uh to work he's got he's got all the toys if, uh, now it's been a while since i've uh, i've done a real estate deal with gary good lord yeah, uh rick but he had uh like all of the thermal thermal cameras and stuff to yeah, show you where you're important. losing heat in the home yeah. or you know, uh, where there wasn't ins insulation or something like that, which was always very handy. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, I think those would be two great guys in terms of uh, le the legal side of things. Um, I would say somebody like Gurdip. Gurdip mm, is Gurdeep an excellent, Gurdeep. excellent notary in town. I can't say enough about Gurdip. Um, and the reason that I, I, nothing against Joanne or or any of those guys, yeah. they're, they're excellent at their job as well. The reason that I uh, I speak very highly of Gurdip is I had uh, one situation when I was actually in real estate, and he really advocated for my client, and he mm. fought like hell with the other lawyers, and I really appreciated that. Right, so, for an issue, obviously, that came up. It was, it was, and it mm. had nothing to do with uh, with our side. It was the other side. We were, uh, we were buying a for closure if memory serves right and there was an argument going on with lawyers on the other side as to oh, yeah. who was going to get what money and all of that sort of stuff 
and uh, Gurdip was excellent at advocating for us saying we don't care what you guys do just yeah. get it sorted this woman needs to get into her home so right because yeah, it was so it was, wasn't transferring from the bank or whatever that's correct hmm. that's correct we were able to get the the money out but the uh, the disbursements of the the money on the other side was a challenge and uh, so like I said it had nothing to do with us but it, this was oh my god the week before Christmas I think we were trying to get this deal done and this uh, this woman w was with her children she was homeless at this point now because she had sold her home and oh it was a nightmare yeah. but uh, we got them we got them there we got them in the home awesome. and they're still not always rewarding home today. you can work through it right yeah exactly sure. exactly cool. well I think that's it Rob Thank it's been a pleasure appreciate it Absolutely. thanks everyone Thanks, Bye. guys. Have a good weekend, actually. There you go.